Welcome to the Dave Lee Salvation Army. Hmm. Praise and worship, youth, community. Lots of natter natter natters over there. But today, I just thought I'd look at Jonah. Jonah makes a break for it. <coughs> oh dear me. Just imagine being swallowed up by a large fish and spending three days in its innards. Why Jonah? In some ways, Jonah was like you and me. He really wanted to go God's way until, you know how it is, when it's been a bit cold outside or the snow's up. And really, I, I don't want to do anything. I want to go my way, because my way's best. But God pointed in one direction. And what happened? Jonah went exactly in the opposite way. See it. See it go. Jonah, I've learned, that Jonah was a prophet. He's, well, he's in the Bible, and if you can see my Bible here, uh, about halfway through-ish. And Jonah was especially chosen by God to do his work. Especially. Yeah, here it is. Jonah. Some people have been told that Jonah is not really about a great fish, but about God's compassion for the lost. I think we'll go down the big fish first. And... Jonah was downright stubborn. He had great adventures. And the way he got about was, well, just amazing. Jesus knew about him and even compared himself to Jonah. But before we read and enjoy the story, let's learn more about him with the, with the chorus, all about Jonah and the whale? Listen to my tale of Jonah and the whale Way down in the middle of the ocean How did he get there? Whatever he went Way down in the middle of the ocean yourself. But it's all about God's love and patience. The Lord pursued Jonah, sending a violent storm and frightened even the, soul, the sailors and the soldiers on the ship. Oh dear, I don't like being in a storm. Do you? After a while, Jonah was in the fish. Or was it a fish? And God worked and caused the fish to spit up Jonah on a beach. So Jonah went to Nineveh and warned the people of their coming judgment. Perhaps this little book is for children, but there's more to it than that. Can we, can we tie Jesus 
and Jonah together. There was a little town named Nazareth. And Jesus grew up there. He was less than an hour's walk away from Gal's Hopper, where jo Jonah lived and where his tomb was. In the years before Jesus uh, started teaching and healing people, he probably visited that tomb to sit in the shade and think about Jonah and about what sort of man he was and how much God had worked through him. So, this morning, we sit and ponder and think about somebody you feel you... Well, you get to know them, don't you? We've been looking at Catherine Booth and what she was going through being married to William. Now, she says, today, the only obligation you have is to love one another. Now, oh, isn't that wonderful? The first that Catherine asked of William, that there would never be any secret. Well, I've been trying to ponder this and see in their life as ministers, having a big family and having lots to do. But you feel as if you know Catherine. Think of all the washing. Think of all the caring she did. And she still gave out the word. She still preached beautifully. So, Jesus already knew and loved the story of Jonah and the big fish. And it was written in the Old Testament of the Jewish people. That scripture that they read pretty often. Both Jesus and Jonah came from the same district of Galilee. Did you appreciate that? So now, let's get back to in time, nearly 4,000 years ago. Nearly, not quite. Now, looking at Jonah chapter 1, Jonah runs from the Lord. One day, the Lord spoke to Jonah because Jonah was a prophet. He spent a lot of time listening to God so that he could tell other people what he'd heard God say. Are you a prophet? Are you an evangelist? We all have an opportunity. You may know somebody who is really nice. They're really a great chatterbox. Chatter, 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 chatter. Oh, and they've never stopped. And it's difficult for you to get a word in edgeways. We often talk about saying our prayers. But prayer is not about saying. It's also about listening. Can I ask you to listen to God? Think about how much God loves you and listen to what he's really saying to you. Now, picture Jonah. Jonah chapter 1 and verse 2. It says, Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. Announce my judgment against it because I have seen how wicked its people are. So God said, go to Nineveh. If Jonah had been sitting on the stool as he listened to God, he might have just fallen off it. You know, the little ones. And what a surprise! Nineveh was the capital of Assyria, the enemy of Israel. It was the last place in the world where Jonah would have thought of going and particularly talking about God's love. But as usual, God is full of surprises. He wanted Jonah to go there because although Israel was very special, he was also God of all the world, even Nineveh. And let us remember where we are today. Whatever we're doing, that 
Jesus is for everybody, whether they believe or whether they don't. The sailors, well, if you were the sailor on that boat, we wouldn't be sat here. So, how often do you want to go in the opposite direction? We've all, or a number of us, have cars and they have those, well, you know, when they talk to you to give you the direction and you definitely don't want to go down that road. I know the way. And how often do we decide? It's not my way. I want to go down there. So Jonah, however, set out in the opposite direction. And sometimes we get out of bed the wrong way. Metaphorically speaking, you know, that feeling of being cross and awkward and the opposite to what people want. And you go downstairs and you've not had your breakfast made for you. Or somebody's put a bowl of cornflakes when you wanted Weetabix. Oh dear. Well, or somebody says, take your jacket with you, it's cold this morning. But we don't. And probably get rained on. See what I mean? But maybe Jonah had got out of the bed the wrong way. He was determined, determined not to go and do what God wanted. God said, go east to Nineveh. But Jonah did the opposite. He booked a ticket on the ship that sailed west from Joppa. Today, that town is called Jaffa to far away Spain. There was a reason for Jonah behaving like this, which uh, over the next couple of weeks, we'll find that reason, but a wrong reason. And could Jonah get away from God? <laughs> could he? Oh dear, and we can't. So where are we going? Let's sing that chorus again. Jonah and the whale. Let's, if you can remember, if you know the chorus, let's really focus on the words and really have a new relationship. Way down in the middle of the ocean? <laughs> Do you like swimming in the ocean? Perhaps on holiday? But not way down in the middle. <laughs> So now the Lord has arranged for you and for me to do something different. And Jonah was in the middle of the fish. You threw me into the ocean, said Jonah to God, and I sank down to the heart of the sea. I was buried 
beneath your wild and stormy seas. Then I said, O oh Lord, you have driven me from your presence. How will I ever again see your holy temple? I sank beneath the waves and death was very near. The waters closed around me and seawood wrapped itself around me. I sank down in the very roots of the mountains. I was locked out of a life of imprisoned and imprisoned in the land of the dead. But you, O oh Lord, my God, has snatched me from the yawning jaws of death when I had lost all hope I turned my thoughts to thee may we turn our thoughts to God today and let's sing I dare to be different
dare to be different in this Salvation Army of ours. Amen. Standing by our purpose true, heeding God's command, honor them, the faithful fill all heads to Daniel's band. Dare to be a Daniel, dare to stand alone, dare to have a purpose for and dare to make it known. Great and tall, stalking through the land Headlong to the earth would fall if met by Daniel's band Dare to be a Daniel, dare to stand alone Dare to have a purpose for and dare to make it known Shout for Daniel's band Dare to be a Daniel Dare to stand alone Dare to have a purpose for And dare to make it known Dare to be a Daniel Dare to stand alone Dare to have a purpose for And dare to make it known stand alone, dare to have a purpose for, and dare to make it known, dare to be a Daniel, dare to stand alone, dare 